Yo, what's up good people, it's Kalitu Daniel and welcome to this series as we continue with our discussion of integrating M-Pesa in our applications. In this video, we'll focus on the various APIs that Safaricom offers and we'll discuss each one of them in detail. So if that sounds interesting, let's dive right in. I believe in the previous video, we already discussed about this portal, the developer.safaricom.co.ke so that's the URL to this portal so once you are in this portal you can just if you have an account, you can just log in you can click on this login or sign up button and if you have an account, you can just log in and if you don't have an account, just sign up for an account because you'll need an account for you to integrate M-Pesa into your application so after you have created the account, you can just now log in into your account by entering your email address and your password. Then just click on login for you to be logged in and explore the various features that Safaricom offers. Once you are logged in, you'll be redirected to this page and you'll see this tab here. So click on this APIs tab because that's what we'll be discussing in this video. As you can see, Safaricom provides us with a lot of APIs. Others have never even tried them, but the most common ones are the ones that we'll discuss in this video. So let's get to it. The first one and the most crucial API is the authorization API, which provides a time bound access token that is required to call all the other Safaricom APIs. So you can't integrate any other API without understanding this authorization API. As much as you'll be given the, the keys, you'll need to provide some extra security before interacting with these other APIs. So this authorization API enables us to authorize and authenticate when making other requests to the other APIs. That means that you'll be calling this API every time before calling any other API. So if you are using like a framework, you love to put this in like a middle layer. So before you call any other API, you call this one first, then call the other API. Or if you are using maybe a class, you can add this like a function, uh, which will be called every time before calling all the other APIs. The next API is this one called the dynamic QR API. Uh, I haven't found myself using it, but I believe it's just a kind of a wrapper where instead of initiating the payment through the SDK push, uh, you just they just generate a QR code where you can scan that QR code and it gets data from the QR and initiate that transaction and the user will still have to confirm for the, for the transaction to, to be processed. The other API is this one called the customer to business, the C2B API, that allows you to register URLs so that when a payment is made anywhere offline, that is when someone just goes to their M-Pesa app or their SDK toolkit and they pay to a certain pay bill, uh, this API will provide a way where you register URLs and any payment made to that pay bill, Safaricom will send a call back to the URLs that you registered initially. So this API can be used to simulate a transaction which just brings about the idea of the SDK push. But if you need to handle online payment, I believe this M-Pesa Express API is the one that is most appropriate. The M-Pesa Express API facilitates the merchant-initiated online payments where a customer approves the transaction on their phone. Uh, this API is unique on its own because if you look at all the other APIs, there's only one call to action button. But for this M-Pesa Express, we have two buttons. There's the one for simulate and the one for query. There is this behavior that when you pay to a certain website, it checks the real-time transaction for that push that has been sent to your phone for, for, it to display the, for it to display a good feedback to the user. So if you look at it that way, you'll think that it's this transaction status API that checks the status of a transaction. you think that it's this API that is being called, but this is what exactly happens. We have two APIs that are provided by the M-Pesa Express API. The first one is done to simulate, which is basically to send the SDK push to a user's phone. The second one is this one for querying, that allows us to ask 
Safaricom what is the status of the SDK that has been sent and that's where the confusion comes with this transaction status because you have seen the query there is the, the part of the status that also that's exactly what this transaction status does so you might you might be stuck for some weeks or days struggling with the transaction status API to check the status and in real sense you don't actually need the transaction status API during that time because that's what the ex base express does but we'll go through it in code and you'll see what what I'm trying to explain the other API is this one called the business to customer the B2C API which enables a business to transfer funds from a short code directly to a customer's m -Pesa's account and as you have said earlier that all APIs depend on this authorization API including this B2C also depends on this authorization API the other API is this one called the business pay bill API that enables a, a business to pay directly to other pay bills and there's this one called the business buy goods API that enables a business still to pay to other business stills and those are the ones uh, one of the most common APIs that are, are used you can also check the other APIs that I didn't mention like this one you can just click on learn more in any API that I didn't mention and you can just go through the documentation as you can see the documentation is clear and provides everything that you need you can just go through the ones that I didn't mention but for the case of this series we'll just focus on the Pesa Express the customer to business and business to customer APIs and of course we'll talk about the authorization API we'll use the authorization API because you have seen that all APIs depend on this authorization API so yeah that is it for this video guys see you in the next video where we'll see on how to get credentials in this developers portal peace out